This knife has a straight edge on it, so it's very easy. And maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. All right, hey guys, so we are back again with another video. And if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Alfie and I'm a fourth year medical student studying in London. If you guys enjoyed this video, then remember to hit the like button and subscribe because that really helps out the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about something really cool I did last year where I got to 3D print a heart for my research project. So ever since high school, 3D printing was always a form of technology that I was super fascinated by. And even back then, it seemed super advanced and kind of out of reach. I even remember reading articles when I was applying for med school about 3D printing live organs and the success they were having with that. Going back to my project, when I found out that it would involve some 3D printing, I was super excited. Yeah! I was asked to build a physical model of a surgically corrected heart, which had a congenital heart defect, and run it through some simulations in and out of an MRI scanner to see how efficient the heart was now. All right, so I know that sounds pretty confusing, but let me just quickly draw something out to try and explain that. So the heart, as we know, has two sides, and in each side has two chambers. So when a side doesn't really develop properly during pregnancy, a baby can be born with a condition called hypoplastic left or right heart syndrome. So hypo makes you think of something small, and places means to form in Greek. And so what this means is that there's a side of the heart that hasn't properly formed. So children born with this defect undergo an operation called the Fontan procedure. And this involves making a new connection using the blood vessels in the heart to redirect blood so that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can go where it should go. This surgically corrected connection is known as TCPC, uh, which stands for Total Cavopulmonary Connection. And that's because it uses the caval veins in the heart and redirects this towards the heart, hence cavopulmonary. Once I knew of the project, I had to do a lot of pre-reading. And so this was important so that I could understand what the procedure or operation really entailed and to understand the physiology behind the congenital heart defect and also to look at existing papers and research projects on what has been done to create physical models of the heart. So once I understood the background information, I could actually start making the physical model. So I was very, very lucky to work with an amazing team. And so this consisted of a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon, uh, two members of staff from mechanical engineering, uh, someone from the Institute of Child Health, and also a PhD student from mechanical engineering. The PhD student was the person who actually spent the most time with me and, and taught me all the little techniques and things like that to help create this physical model. So he suggested making this 3D physical model by printing out a water soluble mold and then pouring silicon over this mold and then dissolving the uh, water soluble mold inside to leave behind a hollow physical connection. To 3D print anything, you need to create a CAD which stands for a computer-aided design. And this is basically what the 3D printer will print out. To create this CAD, I needed to extract the connection from a selected patient's data. There was some delay in getting the patient data, and I didn't get any until January. I was on quite a tight schedule because the deadline for the research project was in March slash April. And this made me worry a bit because I was wondering whether or not I would finish on time. Now, once I had the patient data, I now had to extract the connection, and I used this software called Mimix. And when this was done, I exported this into another software called Mesh Mixer. And in this software, you could smooth out the edges and you could make it resemble what a typical heart would look like. And to complete the whole model, we needed to house this within a box. When we were going to test the physical model out later on, we didn't want the model to just be flapping about. Now, I had a lot of help actually with the design of the box from another mech edge student. And the reason for that is because as a medical student, I'm not very familiar with, you know, the applications and the designs to create things like this. But nonetheless, by working together, we managed to get the job done. Now, with all the designs done, we can actually go about making something. We decided to print the TCPC using a water-soluble polymer called PVA, and that stands for polyvinyl alcohol. And so what water soluble means is just that when you put this in water, it will dissolve. At this stage, the printer we were using was actually quite fiddly, and that meant it broke down a few times. So we had to repeat the process again and again. The actual printing time for the product I was printing was quite long as well, and so the machine had to run overnight. And the reason for this is because the way a 3D printer works is it will print out all the support structures for the product before it prints out the actual final product itself. <laughs> Moments 
later. So once this process was done, I was left behind with something that kind of resembled a chicken foot. So after sanding it down and coating it with a spray, I was ready to coat it with silicon. So silicon is a good material choice here because it's flexible and that means it can mimic what blood vessels are actually like. Using silicon is another fiddly thing because you have to mix it with a catalyst and then use a vacuum pump to suck out all the air bubbles so that when you pour it, there isn't any air there. After pouring a few layers of silicone and letting that dry for a few days, we were then ready to dissolve the inner mold to leave behind the final product. So when the model was done, we were ready to assemble the box with plastic screws. And this actually took longer than I thought because it actually wasn't so easy to put a box around the physical model. So we secured the box with plastic screws and the reason for that is because we were about to put this in an MRI machine and um, that's a massive magnet so you don't want any metal screws in there. And the last thing to do involved a bit of plumbing so I had to cut up some tubes, uh, use some valve taps and connectors to complete the whole circuit. <laughs> Now, once this was done, we were ready for the experiment. For the experiment, we wanted to use a continuous pump, but the one at the hospital actually just broke down recently. So we had to improvise and we ended up using the sink. What? And so I know that sounds a bit odd, but a sink functions in just the same way. So with everything set up, I ran the experiment with different flow rates going into our system and our physical model, and I was looking to measure energy loss by measuring pressure and flow at different points of the physical model. With the first experiment done, we were now ready to try the experiment in an MRI scanner. And so we were looking to collect some data to show energy loss by using a new technology called 4D Flow. So 4D Flow is an amazing new technology which can show a lot of different things and is really useful when looking at the heart. The way that an MRI scanner works is it uses a really strong magnetic field and it forces the protons uh, in your body to line up. Now, because my physical model uh, wasn't a living thing and was only filled with air, it was difficult to get a good signal. We tried to put some water within the box and we realized that we didn't make the box leak proof. So this was a big no-no because a leak in an MRI scanner, which is a really expensive machine, uh, would get me in massive trouble. We suddenly had an idea to either put gel or shampoo in the box and so with time running out in that day, we ran off to the closest supermarket and we bought 10 bottles of shampoo and we ran all the way back. So looking back at it, we were on a really tight schedule because doing things like booking an MRI scanner isn't something you can just do whenever you want. There were all these little things that had to go right on the day. Thank the Lord it did. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> so to wrap things up, the project was a success. And I think the most important thing I learned doing this project was that, you know, you're definitely a lot more capable than you think you are. And whenever you're in a situation where you're surrounded by experts in their field, don't be afraid to ask them and try to learn as much as you can from them. And that wraps up my TED Talk. Thank you for coming.